Hello, and thank you for purchasing my Unreal Engine 5 quest system. In today's video, we're going to make a quest step by step from scratch. But before you continue, make sure you watch the quick start guide video. That's going to teach you how to set everything up and get it connected. And we're going to continue from there. And here we are back in our third person map. And I went ahead and I emptied the DT quest data table. And we're going to start off doing by making a new map. I'm going to just make a basic one. And if you hit play and press the L key, you should be able to see your quest log. And if you didn't, make sure you watch that previous video. That'll walk you through setting everything up. Now I'm just going to go ahead and lay out some static meshes and some NPCs for our quest. For this quest, we're going to collect some items, interact with an NPC, and travel to an NPC. So go ahead and save your map. I'm just going to call mine new map. And then our day table, go ahead and add a new row. For the row name, go ahead and enter quest underscore one. And then for the level name, go ahead and enter our level. New map. Now we need a start at tag and a complete at tag. I'm going to go ahead and enter quest underscore one dash start and quest underscore one dash turn in. You can name these whatever you want, but it's good to name them something you'll easily recognize in the future if you come back and just look at the NPC. For rewards, I'm just going to go ahead and give them a bunch of experience. Since we don't have an item system in this, we might as well just keep it simple. Go ahead and add some text for your quest. The short description is only shown on the quest log, but the long description will be shown in the quest window as well as the quest log. You also get state messages. These are little special messages that appear in the window based on the current state of the quest. So you want to select the state you want the message to appear for first and then enter your message. Now go ahead and select your first actor where you want the quest to start at and search for tags and add an actor tag. That's a reference to your quest start at actor, which is quest underscore one dash start. And now where we want to turn the quest in at, we add the other tag for the complete at actor tag, which we set to quest underscore one dash turn in. So now if we press play, we should be able to see our quest, and there it is. And we should be able to accept it, but we don't have any objectives yet, so we won't be able to actually complete it. But we can verify that all of our information is in it. We're going to go ahead and tweak the state text real quick. Next, we want to add our objectives. What we want to do is come over here and pick up these boxes, and then talk to this guy, and then we'll go over here and turn them in. So what do we do? Well, first we go back to the data table and then for the objectives, let's go ahead and add a row. And for our first objective, we know we want to collect something. So let's select the collect handler and then give it an objective text. This is what will appear in the quest tracking as well as in the quest log. Now for the objective data, we have to provide a tag and a count. Go ahead and select the tag. I'm just going to enter box and then the count is the number that you want the player to collect. So I'm just going to go back to my level. I'm going to add a few more boxes and then I'm going to select them all and set the tag on them to box because that's what we entered in our data table. So now when we press play, we should see the indicator and you see how we only need three. So let's go over here and the interact system will automatically detect them. So you just press E to collect. And there you go, the quest is complete. But let's kick it up a notch. And before we continue, let's go ahead and drop our reset button into the level. This will give us an easy way to reset our quest. Just go ahead and step on the button and you should see the quest reset. Now we can pick it up again and complete it again. All right. Now we want to add our second objective, which is going to be talk to this guy right here. So we need to add a tag to him. We're going to call him Mr. Blue. And then we just add an objective. Then for a handler, we're going to do the interact with. And then for our tag, we're going to enter Mr. Blue. Go ahead and enter something for your objective text or interact with Mr. Blue. Okay. Let's reset the quest and try it again. Now we see our objectives in both locations. We go over here, we can interact with them, and then that'll satisfy that one. We can also make a cutscene play here if we wanted. Go ahead and check out the documentation if you want to learn how to do that. And for our final task, we're going to use the quest objective travel. So if you want the player to travel to an actor, this is how you would do it. They just got to get close enough and then it'll complete. For the data, it's expecting a tag, which is the tag of our actor as well as a radius, which is the size of the sphere collision that's used to detect when the player overlaps it. So go ahead, enter 500 for the radius, and then for your tag, enter Miss Pink. So now when we travel to Miss Pink, you'll see it didn't work. And that's because we forgot to add our tag to it. So go ahead and add your tag. I'll run on over. And there you go, it completed. I'll complete this one. It'll pick up some boxes. 
So as you can see, it's a very flexible system. You can add objectives at any point in your game. If you have to come back through after launch and add some more objectives to your quest, you can easily do that without having to worry about rebuilding everything. Let's go ahead and add some more boxes because I want to try adding a repeatable quest to our NPC now. Let's go to our data table and add a new row. Repeatable underscore one is what I'm going to call this one. And make sure you select the quest type repeatable and enter our level name and a start at tag and a complete at tag. I'm just going to use the same actor for both the start at and turn in. And I'm just going to name it something else a little bit more generic. More boxes sounds good. And we'll give them a little experience for this reward just to show something in the window. Go ahead and add some text for your quest. Now let's go ahead and add an objective. And for the handler, just select collect again, just like the other one. And then for the tag, we're going to use our box. Count, we're going to set to three. And then add a little objective text. And then go ahead and add our tag. We're also going to add a prerequisite of the quest that we just completed. That way I can show you how that works. So go ahead and add a new prerequisite, select the state completed, and enter the quest row name. For the key, quest underscore one is a reference to our first quest. So now we don't see our repeatable quest yet, but when we go ahead and complete this quest, we should see it. So let's complete it real quick. Complete it, and there it is. So we spawned a repeatable quest as soon as we finish the first quest. Now we can go back and pick up some more boxes. And we can do the quest again if we want. The repeatable logic's already built in there for you, so you don't have to worry about adding it. And that's the basic setup. There's a few more things I want to show you just to customize it a little further. Let's go ahead and remove the prerequisite for now. And now when we reset the quest and we pick up our original quest, we can see the indicators overlapping each other. And you may like this, but if you don't, there's an easy way to fix it. Select the actor and then add a component to it, the AC underscore quest underscore actor component. And then from the quest helper indicator section, go ahead and set the multiple indicator handler to priority. And see, it'll select the one of the highest priority. You can still access both quests when you try to interact with the NPC. So now when we collect them, as you see, we only collected them for one quest. By default, this is how it works. So if you wanted to count for both, where you only have to pick up three to satisfy both instead of six to satisfy both, you're going to have to make some adjustments to the code. And I'll show you what you have to do. Go ahead and open up the AC underscore quest underscore player controller component in the blueprints components folder. And then right here, this return node. This is causing us to break out of our loop early. So what you really want to do is create a Boolean variable. Let's make it a local variable. And then give the name interacted with something. And then just go ahead and set it to true. And then for our return, we're just going to feed this value in. That way, if it finds something, it'll still return true. But if it doesn't, it'll still return false. At the same time, it'll actually iterate through everything now. So let's go ahead and try it again. I'm going to pick up both quests. And now when we collect an item, both quests should get credit. However, if we get too close to a bunch of them, we'll be able to pick them all up at once. So you're going to want to spread your items out or add additional logic to compensate for this. For quest rewards, you're going to want to check out the documentation. If you're using my item and inventory system, I have a whole video based around integrating the two. We also go over quest events in that video a little bit. There's a ton more features to this system. You're really gonna wanna dive into the documentation. I just wanted to keep this video simple to help people get started. If you have any questions or you have any tutorial ideas based around the system, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for your purchase and good luck with your game. So now when we travel to Miss Pink, you'll see it didn't work.